Mr. Olson. I thank the chair, and I want to sincerely welcome and thank the witnesses, Ms. Campbell, Mr. Slavitt, Ms. Spelsey, and Mr. Lau, for appearing before this committee this morning and now this afternoon. And my guess is you might be a little nervous, somewhat tired because this has gone on for almost four hours. You probably haven't gotten a lot of sleep the past couple of weeks, and you're probably a little angry uh, because the commander in chief, the skipper of Obamacare, our president does not understand that the skipper is responsible for everything that happens on his ship, the good and the bad. As we've seen here this morning, there's a major league blame game going on with the administration, and y'all, unfortunately, are the targets of some of that blame. And I'm damn angry that I, in 700,000 Texans I represent, have been misled, misled, and misled. In this room, one month ago, the Health and Human Services Deputy Administrator for Consumer Information opened up his testimony by saying, and I quote, CMS has worked hard to build, refine, and test the infrastructure that will allow Americans to enroll in coverage confidently, simply, and securely, end quote. We now know that that was one big, fat lie. And I proved it this morning when Chairman Upton gathered in this hearing about 9 o'clock, I logged on to healthcare.com to try to enroll my family in my health care plan. Like you, Mr. Slavitt, and my colleague Michael Burgess, I tried to get on Texas' plan. And while I got my email back, my confirmation, I got this after 41 minutes. Please log in again. You're logged out now. Return to your Marketplace account here. That's happening all over the country. And this lie is way beyond an awful computer program. This lie affects the health and well-being of every American. And my question will be about the testing that was done uh, to, get, to get to this point. And I want to follow up on some of the questions from all my colleagues. And this is mostly for you, Ms. Campbell, and you, Mr. Slavitt. Uh, being a computer science major from Rice University and a former naval, naval aviator who could not afford to have my computer drop offline as I'm rolling in my plane to drop a torpedo to stop Russian submarine from launching ballistic missile, nuclear missile at our country, <laughs> I know that that system is pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and tested to fail. My goal is, did CGI and QSI take these steps, push, 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 and test your part to failure? First of all, sir, you must be in my household. My husband, too, is a naval aviator. Um, Why Navy? <laughs> Uh, but um, we, we, we worked tirelessly around the clock to make sure that we were doing everything we could to make that the product that we delivered on October 1. We're not excited, nor are we pleased with what we delivered on October 1, but, you know, in principle, it worked. It's not working great, and we're working to improve it, but it did um, enroll, it is enrolling people. Mr. Slavik, you're... How about you, sir? Push, 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 make sure all the variables, best you could do? We do believe the Data Services Hub received adequate testing. Right. And so any idea what happened when your part was working pretty well, pretty well Ms. Campbell, you and Mr. Slavitt as well, somehow CMS got it and the product that came out fell apart. Any idea what happened there? Uh, you'd have to ask CMS. And I plan on doing that. Mr. Slavitt, any idea? As I said a little bit earlier, uh, the system didn't receive adequate end-to-end -end testing. Uh, and we took those results, those results were made available, uh, and I think we made aware of those results to CMS. So like both of y'all, you pushed the envelope, they just hit the on button, saw the light came on and said, this thing works. Okay, a little facetious there. I want to close by asking a rhetorical question of all four of y'all. If you were the President of the United States and you woke up on September 3rd this past year, knowing what you know, would you have rolled out the exchange 
on October 1st? Ms. Campbell? I can't begin to answer that question. Nope. I don't know what flexibility existed to change the dates. Not the dates, but the program. If you just, could you have stopped it? You know the problems. You guys know the problems. Would you have stopped it? Yeah, I, can't, I don't know. Okay. I can't answer that. Can't answer that one. It's just rhetorical, guys. Uh, not in a position really to answer that. Oh, come on, fellas. I guarantee us the people in the audience, they'd have all sorts of pins on that. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. How much time expired? Uh, 